What's up? This is Rebel Radio. What up? What up? This is DJ Newmark. This is Peanut Butter Wolf. It's your boy. It's okay. Keep checking out Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio. This is Rebel Radio. We're in the place right here. Uh, Rebel Radio is going down. What do you say? Rebel Radio? Oh, wait. Let's do it again. Rebel Radio. What's up, Rebels? Welcome back to Rebel Radio, the weekly show where I bring you the Rebels who are shaping our culture. I'm your host, Josh Levine. This week, we're dropping into part two of a conversation I had with Eddie Donaldson a couple months ago. If you don't know, Eddie is the founder of Gorilla One, a friend and ally to graffiti artists and, and the street art community. He's a big part of the reason why brands have invested so heavily into graffiti. Um, and he, he helps artists sell their work and build their careers and all of that. He's also been my co-host on a number of episodes uh, with Risk, Retina, Taz, Slick, uh, Esteban Oriol, Dave Navarro, uh, some others that I'm not remembering at the moment. So you've probably heard his voice quite a bit on this show if you're a repeat listener. I had Eddie on uh, about a month ago talking about an art show, virtual art show that he was involved with at the time, an online drop. Uh, make sure you go back and check that one out. He was doing with Trist- Tristan Eaton, and we talked a bunch about art during the pandemic and street art, especially when nobody's out in the streets and how how artists are adapting to that. Today, we have a little bit of a broader talk about music and culture, how our kids' attachments to their favorite musicians uh, might be different from how ours were back in the day. Uh, he also tells us about what Virgil Abloh stole from him. I'm not going to give it away. You got to listen to the episode. Let's get into it now. You know, I think about musicians, right? Getting people to listen to a song is different than getting them to buy a ticket to a show. And that's different than getting them to buy a product from you. Right. Those are three different businesses. Yeah. And some people are great at all of them. And some people are great at only one and they can't make the others work. Right. Yeah. Um, You know, there's artists that sell. It's not just one. There's artists that sell tickets like crazy, but they can't get a a hit on the radio. Yeah. Right. And vice versa. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, I've seen that with, with influencers that, you know, they get paid by a brand because they can get a lot of clicks on a photo, but that doesn't mean that people are going to buy, buy, yeah. right. It's, they're two different things. And I don't, you know, I haven't seen the, 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 the mag- magic formula that you could look at in advance and say, that's going to work. And that one isn't. Some, I think that you can tell when it's obvious. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'll tell you, I don't understand it anymore. I'll be honest with you. I got 18, 21 year old daughters and the way they think is nothing like the way we thought. And can you think of an example? Well, yeah, like my daughter shits on mostly everything, but off white can do absolutely nothing wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? And not no offense to Virgil and whatever he's going through, but it ain't that hot to me. So I'm looking at things that I think are hot or that I know are hot based on what's the traction they're getting. Sure. And my daughter won't even, I mean, she's shitting on it. But yet Off-White is like, it's the thing, you know? I mean, that's a great example, right? Like, uh, you know, if you, it's it's tempting to say, well, if you took the logo off and it didn't have the tape on it and it was just that shirt, then it's just a shirt. But you can't really like separate the two. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I do, I do. I'm, but but I, I mean, I'm, you can do whatever you want. I'm not. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But no, I'm just I get saying, it. I get like, what you're saying. they. It doesn't. You know, it. Some things like it's hot because it's a, a, a off-white shirt. Well, I might be a little impartial or a little biased because he stole our logo. <laughs> Fair no enough. Offense, you know. Fair enough. Came to the booths, liked our shit next year he's making millions of dollars selling a, a variation I forgot about that a variation I mean, of the logo yeah and look if you can do it better do it i'm not a, you know but i'm still a little biased I, w- I wouldn't blame you but and here's another thing too though to think about thinking about my kids right as an example one month one year they love an artist and then it's just they don't lo- next year they don't love them no more like a musician yeah, yeah. and our and our the dudes we loved when we were 18 years old we still love 
we, I mean, you know, I'm not a big fan of third base anymore. I probably never really was a big fan of third base, but that might be a, b- a bad example. But like, my kids will love Jason Derulo. Right. And now, who's who? So I think that it's hard. We can't compare the era that we came from to what's going on now, musically, pretty much in anything, but especially in music, right? Because you know, there weren't but so many slots at yeah. the time. And, you know, especially with hip hop where it was a new genre. You know, I always say like there was a time when me and you, like we knew every record that came out yeah. that week or that year, right? Yeah. Or you knew 90% of them. You liked 80% of them. Some you didn't, but yeah, it wasn't. The window was the window was smaller. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you had to be good to fit through that window. And you know, to some extent, you're defined by your, your genre. You're a punk rocker. You're Now, you know, guys like us, we might have stepped into other genres more than some other people. But I think t- still to a large extent, if you were into hip hop, like that was an underground thing. Not everybody. Some people didn't even know about it. Yeah, didn't remember know that. what was going on. Yeah. And then, you know, other people, like they knew the top, you know, the Beastie Boys and Run DMC. And yeah, the top five. That was it, right? And so if you were in the culture, then you were kind of like, even if you didn't love somebody's record, it still was relevant to you because it was part of your culture that you were, you were all about that culture. Yeah. Right? Now, that doesn't exist. There's no hip-hop kids yeah. in the way that we know them. Right, you know, that, 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 are, that are teenagers today. It doesn't exist. I spoke on a panel at Cal State Dominguez Hills with Mark Love and Fat Lip uh-huh. and Paul Stewart, a couple other people. And what I, how I articulated that kind of was, to me, it was like an education. Like I was able to hear what dudes from a whole nother state or sure. city were going through because sure, they sure. were talking about real life. You see what I mean? So I, I had to listen because I wanted to learn what they were going through, what yeah. they were really going through. Now, these niggas are not rapping about what they're really going through. You know, Lambos I, and this well, and that. Okay. It's not. It's not life lessons. It's d- whimsical, dreamy shit. Which some of them are doing that, and right. I get that. That's the goal now. But like my kids, they're not being educated by these people, like we were being educated. Poor righteous teachers. Well, I, I, you're right. Also those uh you know the things that people were learning about we already know about now we as a society yeah yeah you're right right and so like we like we didn't know you know i like i didn't know there was gangs in every city yeah no doubt i knew we had them here and we but i didn't know that you know kansas city or or wherever gang banging everywhere you had that right and so but now we know and yeah. we know everything basically we have access to all you know our kids have access to a good to point so i never thought about it like that so you know it, it like so that. it's like anyway back to it like i think you know on the one hand it's is unfair to expect our kids to have that same kind of relationship or attachment to their culture that we had to ours because it's just a different environment it is you know the flip side is if you're jason derulo how do you build a career how do you build a business right and Arguably, like, you know, he he made a lot more money off of whatever he made that than, than when the they cats, would, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Teachers were able, and they were sure. out there kicking that knowledge. Yeah. I mean, it's a different ball game, but but they're also like up against a lot more. You know who I'm listening to, though, is uh, uh, Jack Harlow. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's my new shit. OK. What's popping? Brand new whip just hopped in. That's a high record. Well, he's representing uh, 502, Louisville, yeah. Kentucky. Oh, okay. I like that. And you know what else I like, too? And I hope him or none of his people never hear this, but he doesn't look the part. Mm. You know, he just looks like a nerdy white kid from Louisville, Kentucky. He's not dressing up all the time. And his hair's messy, but he's about it. You know what I mean? And I, f- I find that interesting. I mean, that's know? the other thing, too, that has changed, right, is, is for you know, better or worse, right, uh, you know, you could be, you could look like anything in, in rap. In rap, yeah. And but not back in the day. You had to either be hard or super, like, dancey. You had to have a and you probably you had, had to, to be black. fade. Yeah, you right? had, like, had to have a fade and some some gear on, or sure. you had to be hard. You know, there was no. You could just be like the average kid down the block. You right. Know, you were getting laughed off off the out of the cipher immediately. You weren't even invited. You right. Know? Yeah, and you and you probably had to be black, or if you were white. 
you had to, you know, be able to you assimilate had to look like into MC black. Search. Yeah. Had, or Danny Boy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, Danny Boy, like those guys changed more than maybe anybody else. Yeah. Right. They changed that perspective because uh, they were like some rowdy white boys. Yeah. That did, you know, and now it's different. And I think, you know, I don't know. I mean, you have biracial kids, right? Like they, uh, I assume, have a different relationship to to the music in that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, they they don't care if you're black or white. It means nothing to them. You know, right. like when my daughter told me that Tyler, the creator, was her favorite rapper, I was like, you know, does him being gay have anything to do with it? And she's like, what does that got to do with anything? <laughs> And I wasn't dogging them. Yeah. I just wanted to know, no, like, how do your friends and your peers feel about that? Because where we came from, that would have been a an game issue. ender. Yeah, it would have been an issue. And she was, sure. and she literally said, "What does that have to do with anything?" And that was so profound for me because I was like, "Here I am going, does that matter?" And she's going, "What does that matter?" It's like complete opposite <laughs> ends of the spectrum. Yeah, you know, we were talking about that the other day. It's like I think it's great that it doesn't matter. You for know, sure. I think. I think everybody should be free to do whatever it is they want in any business that they're in and their sexual preferences or color, race, background should have nothing to do with that. You know, whether they're gang members or not, whether, you know, we, we're all, if you're creative and you can get it done, that should have less to do with it than the actual product that you're producing. But at the same time, you know, I would love to see, you know, the game be a little bit more filtered when it comes to the responsibility of being a leader or an influencer when it comes to these younger kids. You know, I'm a huge advocate of like toning down the guns and the sex and, you know, wet ass pussy is the worst song in the world to me, even though I can't stop playing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that Takashi 69 doc that's about to come out? No. So there's a whole thing. It's like the making of Takashi 69. Oh, okay. And one of the things they say in it is, it's like one of those things that you hate so much that you can't stop looking at it. Sure, sure, sure. And that's me. I'm, right. I'm on that dude. I'm hey. trying to, I'm trying to know, <laughs> how do you do it? How do you go from nothing to all that overnight? You know, it could I mean, have look, been the, the rainbow hair. The, the reality it? is, you know, we, we don't get to choose, right? We don't get to just like, I mean, you know, not to say, you know, you know, our parents' generation seeing Easy E for the first time we're saying the same thing yeah you know what i mean they're like hey well, I, you know i wish they would tone down the yeah you know, well and, you're right you know youth is youth right i mean i guess you know more than anybody considering your days with dub c like you were how yeah was, i mean we were we were we were uh we were past the shock phase yeah but we were in the you know my the the era that i participated in was the like you know the the uh life imitating art phase right when uh beef on record turned into beef in the streets be for real right yeah. and and you know tupac and biggie getting shot and all that right and so um uh but yeah i mean we you know we don't get to choose what our kids or what the next generation is you know finds acceptable yeah um and I think to some extent it's all good. It's you know, you mentioned, you mentioned, uh, you know, gay rappers. Are there gay? Are there outwardly gay graffiti artists? In this, yeah, there, there in has the been. There has been. There was a dude named uh, what was his name? I can't remember. There's one dude from New York that was gay. Okay. I I, I can't remember his name. It started with an N, but he went on a graffiti video and was like, "I'm gay and I will beat your ass." Like, and he was about it. Like, he was snot, ear snot. That's okay. his name, ear snot. Lights can do from New York. He's like, yeah, I'm gay, but I will beat your ass. And, and he, nobody cared. Yeah. You know? I, I don't think in L.A. there's really, uh, there was really room for that, at least then. There may be now. Sure. I think now that it's turned into street art versus graffiti. Right. I don't know who's a graffiti artist or a street artist anymore. Right. Um, so I think in the street art thing, there's probably a bunch of gay dudes that are accepted. That I just don't know who they are. Mm hmm but what I'll, t I'll tell you what's interesting, though, is just this last two weekends ago on my birthday, Anger from CBS battled Baba. You know, Baba, the tattoo artist mm -hmm. that started MSK. They battled on, on Melrose, and it was Baba versus Anger and uh, Create versus Fear. So four, two battles. Mm -hmm. 
It looked just like we were in the 90s all over again. again. Is that right? A gang of thugs in the alley, drinking 40s and beers, smoking weed, watching graffiti. And I was kind of, I was happy with that. I, was, sure. I thought it was cool to see the culture be able to, you know, in a time where it's not the same, be right. able to kind of have a battle and yeah. it feel a little reminiscent of the old days. I mean, I stayed about 20 minutes. I had Ava with me and I'm like, I'm sorry. She's right. like, oh, this is cool. I'm like, no, it's really not. Let's go. <laughs> But, but that is what's cool about it, right? Is that we can have, you know, I mean, you're talking about six nine and and uh, uh, Jack Harlow, right? And and I always say, I'm sure I've said it on the show before, like to to equate to categorize that with the shit that we grew up in is a mistake. They're two different genres. Yeah, there's a relationship in the same way that there was a race, relationship from classic rock to emo. Right. Like they're not the same music, although they're connected. But for us, we don't have good sub genres. We don't have a good language for that in hip hop. Yeah. So we call everything hip hop and then we go, well, that's garbage. Yeah. And this is my shit. And, you know, and that's a it's a disservice. And my point being, like, we can have a old school graffiti scene at the same time as this new street art thing that's happening with kids that have never touched a spray can and right and and it's like i'm not saying yeah it doesn't have to be one or the uh, other and well, here's my point it's not going to be one or the other it's not like you said we don't have a choice you know right. and i've always been an advocate for evolution when it comes to the art and i think i've probably said that on this show before as well but i also think and so you know here i go with the old guy at the barbecue with my socks pulled up right I love the fact that, that it's easier for them than it was for us. You know, I think that's awesome. However, some of the rules should still apply when it comes to the integrity and the discipline of the art form, you know. And I think, you know, it's great to see people like Dave Navarro going out there and being super passionate about getting up. And I think he's one of the ones that really pushes the limits to sure. what he's doing creatively with, with, you know, how he's doing it and where he's doing it. So you can't say nothing bad about that dude in his game. But there's a whole lot of other people that, you know, it's like snap together or just add water shit. And I think, you know, for me, I would love to see the audience themselves hold these artists accountable to a certain level of, of playing the game. Everyone can do it, but the audience should like, you know, and I, th I don't think that's happening. <clears throat> I think it happens over time. Right. Okay. Like, I think, you know, back to your your, you know, Jason Derulo comment, like. You know, literally anybody can make a hit record today. Yeah. Um, you know, my kid is 11 years old upstairs downloading stuff from Splice, yeah, throwing beats. it together, yeah. and it sounds halfway good. Yeah. And and if he learns a little bit more, it'll sound really good, right? Because yeah. cause most of the work is done for him. Yeah. Now, but the flip side is, it, so it's easier than ever to make one piece of art or a, or have a moment yeah it's probably harder than ever to have a career and a life yeah built on that and i think the audience steps in over at time, some point right? yeah, yeah you're right and plus so, it's about endurance right it's like how much you know if you're really passionate about what you do you keep doing it you keep right. growing you keep making more music you keep making more art and then you evolve as an artist into creating something that is valid or worthy of a mass appeal per se versus just that one time That's right. shot. Yeah, and you study the craft, right? I think the great the great artists in any art become students of the craft and they learn the hit, you know, they learn about the people that came before them and they you know, all of that. But that's a I think that's a personal choice. Not everybody cares enough to, to do so, all yeah, that. Yeah, to be to to go that deep because they're off to something else before they ever get to that level. You know, and I was, I don't forget who I was listening to, but one of the, one of the graffiti, I had, a, I was at Risky's the other night and I remember who said it, but they were like, I had no choice but to be good at this shit mm. because it's all I did every day and it's only people I hung around. Sure. And that, that alone drove me to a place where I had to get good at what I was doing because it wasn't a part-time thing for me. It was a full-time job. Yeah. Nowadays, like you said, Justin's making a track, then he's doing Spanish, then he's going to, you know. Yeah, he's on Fortnite. Yeah, he's, yeah, so it's not a full-time thing. It's all about the time spent. And that goes to the point you made earlier with the access. We have access to everything. Right. So you can learn a little bit about this and a little bit about that because there's so much in 
there's so much information you can be semi knowledgeable about a gang of different things for sure and not have to invest a shit ton of time into it yeah that's wisdom that is that is but unfortunately well not unfortunately but that's not i can't even pat myself on the back for for knowing that because it's obvious it is but but you know it's obvious to say it but to do it is a whole nother thing and and you talked like i think we both are guilty sometimes of spreading ourselves too thin you know you never know which horse is going to win so you're betting on all of them right and if you you know if you knew if you if you were like your friend and you didn't have these other options and you had to go all in that's on all one did, thing, yeah. then that's what it is. Yeah, that was Eddie Donaldson on Rebel Radio. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Uh, if you like that one with Eddie, there's a lot of graffiti and art episodes. You can go back in the archives, check them all out. Uh, most importantly, come back next week for more Rebel Radio.